So, um, welcome to Sweden. Thank you. Eric Dane. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah. Is this your first time in Sweden? It is my first time in Sweden. I have never been to Stockholm and it is absolutely stunning, this city. You like it? I do. I do. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. You know what? This is my first uh, interview with a Hollywood celebrity. Oh, really? Yeah. You're doing a good job so far. You think so? I think so. I'm quite nervous today. You actually. have no reason to be nervous. Yeah, I know, but, um, but I'm just honest. The, that's, uh, good. I appreciate that's that. The, that's the feeling I've had. And um, Sometimes when you say you're nervous, it yeah. uh, diminishes the nerves a little bit, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I just, uh, you know, <laughs> accept it. But um, I was wanted to ask you about this, about uh, being nervous, because you're an actor. Uh -huh. And um, I mean, uh, how do you handle well, being nervous? When I first started out, I, 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 I call it nervous. Yeah. Um, you know, but now that I've been doing this for so long, I realized that it wasn't really nervous. It was more exhilaration, you know? Because you want so much and you want it to be good. You want, you want, to, you want to do it so badly and you want it to be good and you're, you love what you're doing. So it's not really nerves. You're just it's a type of, you know, you're exhilarated. Yeah. If that's a word. Yeah. But do you have any advice? What is the best way to cope with it? To um, the only to way just out, freak out and to, to penalize it to go uh, right make through it. it. Yeah. Drive a truck through it. Yeah, that's yeah. what you do. Just drive a truck through it. Yeah. How long have you been an actor? Been an actor for professionally for about 15, 20 years. Yeah, 15, 20 years. Uh, let's see, I'm 44. Yeah, yeah, I'd say about uh, 15 years. I've been I've been working pretty steadily. Did you ever have another job? I did. I worked a lot of jobs. From the time I was 14, I worked at an ice cream shop, scooping ice cream, and, yeah. and I worked at a bike shop when I was a little older, and yeah. I did some construction work when I was in L.A. Uh, I tried to be a waiter once, and I, did, I wasn't so good at that. It's like L.A. Everyone is an actor, I know, but, but working the, as a waiter. Exactly. <laughs> I, and a I, I was terrible at it. I dropped a water bottle. On, I didn't drop it on her head, but I dropped a water bottle on this woman, and it, and it spilled on her head. And, she got so bent out of shape, and I, you know, I'm not one to uh, acquiesce or be, you know, like uh, subservient or something. So I said something like, you know, hey, what's your problem? It's an accident. Like, yeah. get over it. You know, yeah. you want a towel? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the manager of the restaurant didn't like that. No. Yeah, you, you, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I apologize. It's my apology that, look, the water's on me. I'm going to take care of your dinner and then we'll give you a free yeah. slice of cheesecake. Would you say you're a good service person? Or are you more like a person who wants to receive good service? <laughs> a little of both. I'm a good service person to my friends and family. Yeah. More specifically, my family. Yeah. Uh, but everybody loves good service. So. Yeah. Don't we? Yeah. <laughs> so I googled you a lot today. So uh -huh. um, you're a family person, for sure. I am for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What do you yeah, like to I, do with your family? Well, um, I like to do everything with them. They're young. My wife. Uh, we've been married almost 12 years. This October, 12 years. Mm -hmm. My kids are six. Billy is six, and Georgia is four. And we like to do just about everything. You know, we're, we're homebodies. We like to stay around the house, although the kids go to school now and they're very busy with all their activities. Um, but we love to swim. We love to go to the movies. We have movie night. Um, we love to do arts and crafts, you know, typical family stuff. And uh, do you have sharks here in Sweden? No. There's a white shark on that bus. And, I don't recall there being yeah, a yeah, we do. white sharks in Sweden. Next time you come to Sweden, if you bring your family. So don't swim here. Yeah, but Don't the, swim in this water. Yeah, but honestly, the sharks are not here. It, here is only swans. It's beautiful. But, uh, th there is, um, it's like a museum with um, butterflies and sharks. Cool. Family, you know, trip uh, place. So you must enjoy living here. I go there with here. my daughter. You must enjoy, how old's your daughter? Four years. Wow, you're new to this. Yes. That's exciting, yeah. what's her name? <laughs> Eleonora. Eleonora? Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. It's a little bit uh, royal, like our location. Yeah. <laughs> it's great, huh? Yeah. It's so pretty. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. It's the greatest thing in the world, right? <laughs> Kids? Yes, yeah. yeah, it's great. 
but you're here in Sweden now um, promoting your new uh, TV series, mm -hmm. Last Ship. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you tell us a little bit about it? It's a little bit dramatic, it's a little bit dark. It's I about the, the world going down, correct, going under. Correct. The, the yeah. first two seasons were about finding a cure for this virus that decimated 80% of the world's population. Mm -hmm. Season two was about sort of disseminating the cure and healing uh, the, the, the people back home and uh, restoring order and creating a, a new government, you know, based in democracy. And, uh, season three is more of a global effort. It's an international affair and it's the stakes are higher than ever. Um, the action's been ratcheted up a few notches. The writers know what show we're making. The characters know what characters they're playing. We've really found our groove. So season three, if you were a fan of seasons one and two, then you're really going to love season three. Yeah, great. I mean, in Sweden, most people know you from another TV series. Grey's Anatomy, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Grey's Anatomy. Um, I mean, they are totally different. One is funny. Right. <laughs> Which role do you prefer? I think this role is a little bit... Uh, I'm a little bit more comfortable in this role. Yeah. It's more dramatic. Uh... And also, it's a, it's a much more physically demanding mm -hmm. role. And I love that aspect of it. I love to feel like when I got home that I worked for, you know, 12, 14 hours. I like yeah. to feel like... But aside from that, I just love the character. You do? I What can... do you like about the character or love about the character? I love how noble this character is. Yes. And how sincere he is and, and at times how conflicted he is you know the weight of the world is on his shoulders so it's kind of fun to play that you never really know oh look they stopped for us <laughs> the things you have to take in consideration when, when you're in the city <laughs> they stopped for us that's great thank you guys thank you appreciate it Yeah, yeah, but uh, Eric, I wonder, what is it like to be an actor? I mean, a real professional, um, world-famous actor. How? Well, what is life like? Life is good, but life is good because uh, because my family's so strong, you know, and and I, I sort of my life outside of acting is what makes my life so good. But my professional life. You know, I've been quite successful over the past 10, 15 years, and I've been very fortunate yes. to be able to work in that industry. Um, you know, and I guess it's like anything else. I mean, to somebody else looking from the outside in might seem that it's this really spectacular, fantastic, glamorous sort of world where everybody says yes, nobody ever says no. And the characters you play that you put up on the screen are the people you bring home with you, if that makes sense. Yes. And they're not. It's like any other job, really. But you know? it must be very interesting people. I mean, oh, famous for people. Sure. And, for I mean, sure. And, you know, it's depending. I mean, a lot of the famous people are not as interesting as you would think. Um, really? No? You know, acting and success in that field, you know, makes... I always... I always say fame makes good people better and it makes bad people worse. Really? Um, it's a real big sheep and goat separator, which is a phrase we use back in the States. And I can imagine that it can be, if you're, you need to be a stable person to keep your, you know, a stable ground. Well, there's nothing you can do to prepare yeah. for, I guess, the pitfalls of success and some fame and celebrity. What is the biggest mistake you ever did in your career so far? Well, that's that's for that's for that's another conversation. But yeah, <laughs> you don't want to talk about it. No, I don't want to talk about because, that. Because what you learn from is uh, almost yeah, always as long, the look, mistakes. mistakes are great as long as yeah. you don't repeat them. I exactly. don't regret anything I've ever done. My life experience is my life experience, but uh, mistakes are necessary. Yes. For yeah. anybody to have an interesting life, you need to make mistakes. But you can't repeat them. Yeah, yeah. D don't you want to share any mistakes? Absolutely today? not. No. No. <laughs> so any success? My mistakes story? are huge. They're colossal. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, and I, but, you I, don't, but but they are secret. <laughs> they're secret. They're secret. Yeah. So um, 
what is the success recipe? If uh, I mean, many people want to become. I mean, it's a. I think your dream that people have to become a yeah. famous. Uh, you know, it's a athlete. lot. It's a it's a lot of focus. It's a lot of discipline. It's a little bit of luck, or maybe a lot a lot of luck. Yes. Um, it's being very prepared, very prepared. So when the opportunity presents itself, you can take advantage of it. Yes. Yeah. Just like in business, yeah. to be organized enough to. I'm telling you, it's no yeah. different. It's just like any other job. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember um, when you first realized that you wanted to become an actor? I do. When was it? I do. I when I was a kid, I used to watch TV shows, and and I I, did, I didn't know how. First, when I was really young, I I thought, how do the people get inside the TV? And then when I realized they were on the TV, not in the TV, <laughs> I wanted to know how where they that that happened and how they they did that. And I, and you know, I grew up in San Francisco, and you know, it could it couldn't be further from Los Angeles. You know, it's separated by 400 miles, but they're worlds apart in mentality. Um, I've never been to San Francisco. Beautiful. So I don't know. It's been great. To, yeah. It's great. Um, but I just decided one day I was an athlete in high school. I played a lot of water polo, and I uh, I ended up doing a play, and I fell in love with it. And I said I want to do this for the rest of my life. And I met somebody who brought actors down to Los Angeles from San Francisco, and mm -hmm. I partied for like eight years, and then I woke up one day and said, you know, if I'm going to do this, I got to be real serious about it and very disciplined. And I, I kind of I got my stuff together and, and focused, and, and things happened for me. Did you stop drinking and stop, uh, you know, all the part this party life? Oh yeah, for you sure, did. absolutely. Well, that was the only way it was going to work for me because I couldn't have any distractions, and going to a party was a big distraction. So you, so you believe actually, if you would have continued that lifestyle, you wouldn't be here right now. I don't know. I'm a firm believer in your. No matter what you do, you're going to end up where you end up. You know, I mean, there are things you can do to self-sabotage, which will preclude you from getting there. But um, I think for me, if you stay the course, you're going to kind of end up where you end up. Yeah. So that said, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that I'd be here right now no. with you had I had stayed on that path. Um, but I think it'd be something similar because I think I think sooner, you know, Eventually, it would have been, become tiresome for me. Yeah. And eventually, I would have, I would have, no pun intended, righted the ship, um, and stayed the course. And I, and I think, you know, I believe in like, I believe in like, you know, a, a, cer a certain set of like, you know, I believe in like a fate. You know. You do. I believe in the. Because we all have a destiny. We all have a destiny. We're all on our own path. As long as you stay on your own path and you focus on your, you know, particular journey. Um, I think you're going to end up where you're supposed to end up. Yes, and I think that's a great end of this interview. Don't you think so? I think so. Why not? Because yeah. yeah, it's getting not? dark too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. You do yeah. a great job for your first one. It was an honor to meet Thank you. you. I think you're a very inspiring person. Thank you. It's good to you're hear. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>